Namaste. So, after a few days of uh, rest, I had a little flu or something. Now I'm back to give the analysis on chapter four of Lakshmi Tantra. And I'm in the studio because this is Diwali weekend, you know, Diwali, India's colorful festival of explosions. So people are going mad with firecrackers. <laughs> it's crazy. Like there isn't enough air and noise pollution already, right? Actually, Diwali, the original name is Deepavali, which means a string of lamps. See, people used to make little um, clay ghee lamps and put them in paper boats strung together with string and sail them on the rivers. It's a beautiful thing, very peaceful. Now it's been completely turned into a nonsense material thing, you know, like 4th of July in the West, in America anyway, where there's just firecrackers and people get drunk and go crazy and it's just it's horrible, it's nasty. The last three years that I lived in Tiruvannamalai, I would go way out in the villages and stay at a friend's place. <laughs> But this year, I have my studio now, which is pretty soundproof, uh, unless somebody sets one off, you know, just really close. So anyway, we'll go ahead now with chapter four. Vyuhas and their Shaktis. So you should have watched the chapter four reading video. Uh, because I'm not going to go into the details here. I'm trying to pull back and get perspective on this complicated subject. But why is it so complicated anyway? Well, it's because the material world is a mixture of different qualities. I don't know if you've done any painting or any artwork on the computer, but every color is a mixture of four primaries, cyan, magenta, huh? uh, yellow, and black. That's if you're using uh, lit up colors. If you're using ink colors, it's a different terminology, but it's basically the same principle. That every color, every shade, Every nuance of color can be mixed from these four primaries. So what does that mean? How does that map to spiritual life? Well, in spiritual life, we have four states of consciousness. We have the three modes of material nature plus the transcendental mode. We have the pure creation in which the modes are in a quiescent state, in balance. And then we have the impure or gross creation in which the modes get mixed up and agitated and move in different ways and combine together and uh, compete in all kinds of different mixed up ways. So to... Uh, create, first of all, and then manage all these possible combinations, that goddess expands herself first into three, and this is called the Chaturvyuha, herself as Vasudeva, and then Sankarshan, Aniruddha, and Pradyumna. And though she is responsible for the Turiya state of consciousness, and they are responsible for the other states of consciousness, which is Sushupti, deep sleep, uh, Svapna, dreaming, and Jagrat, waking consciousness, and also the modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, Sattva, Rajas, 
and tamas. <clears throat> yeah, I could make diagrams of all this stuff, you know, uh, but I think it's better to take the long view, really step back and look at the whole uh, outline of the thing, because that's what's not given in the, in the text itself. What's given in the text are the details. But if you look at the whole outline, what is it? It is the creative energy, the Shakti of Brahman, expanding ourself into different forms for the expansion, evolution, and uh, maintenance, ultimately, of the entire creation. So this is very, you know, it can get very complicated in the details. And not only that, each tradition has a slightly different view on it. <laughs> so if you get caught up in the details, you can get really confused. It's better to stay back and look at the principle involved. The principle is that the creation happens from subtle to gross. It happens from pure to impure. It goes from simple to very, very complex. So, <laughs> what can we learn from that? That if we want to realize this state of being and go beyond the material creation and material consciousness, we have to simplify, relentlessly simplify our view until it's absolutely clear. And yet, in any particular situation, which can be very complicated, we can see the influence of the different principles, the different states of consciousness, the modes of material nature, and so on and so forth. See, this is something that comes after repeated contemplation for many, many years. So it can't be rushed, huh? but it has to be looked into and understood. And I can't help you with that. You have to study. You have to do the work. Um, but you see, this is the design of the trap. She's giving away all her secrets. How the material world is designed. And that will in turn lead to how do we get out of it. <laughs> and a major key is given in the second part of the chapter where she talks about her holy names. And there are many holy names given in this chapter for the different expansions <clears throat> and shaktis. And of course, the main shaktis are three. Mahalakshmi, Maha Saraswati, and Maha Kali. Okay, and each one is in charge of a different guna. Mahalakshmi is the mode of passion, Raja guna. Maha Saraswati is goodness, Sattva guna. And Maha Kali is tamas, the mode of ignorance. So all these three are necessary for the creation, and they all three actually work together even though at times they appear to be competing with one another, actually, at their root, they're one. And the way to master this whole subject, or actually the key to the power of consciousness necessary to master it, is the uh, study and practice of the holy names. And there's quite a list of holy names here. I'm going to go through them very quickly. The most important thing she says here is that he who learns these holy names with understanding attains happiness. This is totally my experience. <laughs> Since beginning the study and practice of this Sri Vidya, so many problems in my life have resolved just magically, automatically, without any effort on my part. I had some uh, serious chronic uh, health problems 
and and those are finished. They're they're resolved, huh? And and others that are in the process of resolving. And I've never felt so comfortable in my body. I've never felt so at ease with who I am. See, so all the physical and psychological irritations and problems and difficulties and diseases gradually diminish with the practice of the holy names. So the key is to find the goddess and the specific name that appeals to you and then practice a mantra based on that name. And we'll get into mantras in the next section. In fact, we'll dive deep into how mantras work and how to construct them and so on. But anyway, right here are a few holy names. Mahalakshmi, and she's in charge of Rajaguna. Mahashri, Chandi, Chandika, Bhadra Kali, Bhadra Kali, Maya, Mahamaya, Mohini, Durga, Maheshwari, Triguna, Bhagavati, Yoga or Yoga Maya, Maya Yoga, <laughs> Vyoma, Puri, Shakti, Paravara, Ragni, Shanta, Prakriti, Shaye, Rame. See, these are all her names, and they are used to construct mantras, and these mantras are very powerful. We've done a series on the Chamunda mantra. The Chamunda mantra is very powerful because it's addressing her in her form when she kills the great demons, Chanda and Munda. And these demons represent agitation and lust and material desire, and actually the whole mundane materialistic concept of life. And we're begging her to kill them, huh? to, get, to get rid of these aspects of our psychology. So then, to go on, uh, Mahakali is responsible for the activities of the Tamoguna, and her names include Tamasi, Mahamaya, Mahamari, Kshudha, Trisha, Nidra, Krishna, Ekavira, Kalaratri, Duratyaya, and many, many more. So why would we want to worship the goddess in charge of the mode of ignorance? Well, because she is in charge of all types of destruction. So we want to be on her good side. <laughs> and also because it will give us insight into the nature of ignorance and how ignorance can be overcome. So these are very important names to know and understand. And then Maha Saraswati represents the miraculous activity generated by sattva guna, motive goodness. And some of her names are Mahavidya, Mahavani, Bharati, Vak, Saraswati, Arya, Brahmi, Mahadenu, Veda Garba, Dha, and Gihi. Not Gihi, but ghee, ghee is clarified butter. But ghee means that she abides in sacred speech and mantras. So this is the goddess who gives us the knowledge that leads to enlightenment. Without knowledge, without specific understandings about how the world is created, how it's managed, and what pleases her, huh? how can we get out of this trap? 
It's not possible. See, so we need this knowledge. We have to approach Saraswati. And all over the East, not only in India, even in Sri Lanka, which is a Buddhist country, people pray to goddess Saraswati at the beginning of studies. Because this makes everything auspicious and leads to realization of transcendental wisdom and ultimate enlightenment. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.